Hello, today I'm talking about facelift and neck lift scars, how to get the very best scars when it comes to facelift surgery. My name is Dr. Julian De Silva. I'm a facial cosmetic surgeon based in London and Harley Street, and I specialize in only the face, and I've been doing this for more than 10 years. And so I'm gonna to talk to you about my experience over these years. What is the final result? Well, the final result with facelift surgery, well, it can be that the scars take 12, or even 18 months to completely heal. But often, scars look quite good even by six weeks. Now in some patients, silicon gel can be helpful because it can enhance healing of those scars. But ultimately, what gives the best scars? Well, meticulous technique, careful choice of closing the skin, such as the type of stitches, non-dissolvable stitches. We can use regenerative medicine such as platelet-rich plasma. We can use oxygen therapy and all of these things can help with the scars. Genetics is definitely of key importance. Some people just naturally they heal incredibly well and scars can be virtually invisible. But then with genetics, the other side of that coin is some people, they're more prone to more scarring. And those patients, maybe they've had scar previously or they're more ethnic. And those patients, all of the things we've been talking about are very important. Scar revision, well, many patients come to me for facelift revision surgery and revision of the scars. It's very important to wait, be conservative, wait until at least nine to 12 months after the surgery, a good amount of healing to give adequate time for that healing process to finalize because anything before then, the skin is still healing. Often it means lifting everything up. It's not possible just to revise the scar because that will give tension on the remaining skin. So what we need to do is lift an area of skin in this um, proximity. And when that area is lifted, we can take away that um, more visible scar. And in this patient, where the scar is quite considerable way beneath the hairline and there's no beveling of the scar, and we can see these really significant track marks, with revision facelift surgery, I couldn't make these invisible, but I could improve them more than 50%. And that means taking the scar up higher, so it's closer to the ear. It means taking the scar with a beveled incision, so it's hidden within the hairline. And it means not using any surgical clips that can give these kind of in larger track marks. And using very fine stitches will give a better scar. And then finally, if necessary, we can use a laser to improve scars, we can use regenerative medicine, and we can use oxygen therapy. So let's have a look at a few of my cases. So this patient of mine, well, she had very loose amount of skin in the neck, loose platysma, jowls, and quite significant facial aging with face and neck lift surgery, vertical face lifting. I took away all that loose skin and by hiding the scars along the very curves of her ear and under the hair, it really has given her like a very discreet scar and virtually invisible. This is the scar initially, like at 24 hours, like the stitches, like around the ears. This is at one week. At one week, the scar is a little bit pink, hidden around the tragus, a little bit lumpy bumpy. And this patient, she had good genetics, normal healing, the scar is very discreet. Another patient of mine, so younger patient, jowls, changes in the neck, mild laxity, very important with the healing of scars is no tension, because uh, it's tension in younger patients that can stretch the shape of the ear. So we want minimal tension so everything is lifted adequately, but the ear is pretty much exactly the same shape as it was before surgery. Now in a male patient, well, as we talked about earlier, we need to be considering like how much loose skin there is and where the beard growth is. And in this gentleman, well, he had relatively mild changes. He was a younger gentleman. And so the concern about lifting his beard growth was not so significant. And so hiding the scar along the very edges of his ear made it virtually invisible. It's certainly very difficult to see. Well, in ethnic patients, we just need to take all of the things that we've been talking, talking about into consideration and just be meticulous with technique. Because certainly in ethnic patients, scars can be more prominent, they can be darker, they can be thicker. And so taking all of these considerations are important. 
well, scarring around the ears, behind the ears, under the hairline. Well, these are this is a patient who came to me for revision facelift surgery, and these scars, like they're three centimeters from the ear. We can definitely improve these scars and make them better, but generally these kind of scars we can improve about 50% because there will not be enough loose skin in order to completely remove these scars. And also this is someone who just the genetically, they're just not gonna heal as well. The scars are whiter and that means there's lost some pigmentation. And even revising the scar and making it better, those genetic factors we cannot change. I personally like to make the scar almost invisible in front of the ear and then behind the ear, well it might be that behind the ear it's a little bit lumpy bumpy but there, that is an area that you cannot see when it's right behind the ear. What about darker hair color? So darker hair color, often darker features if you have more Mediterranean, more ethnicity, often the scars are a little bit darker initially and they can be more pink and it can take sometimes more than six weeks for that coloration to resolve. Sometimes it can take even as long as six months, but generally the scars will still heal relatively well, taking into consideration these precautions. Younger patients we talked about, well, they have more elasticity, very cautious about the earlobe, making sure we don't change the position or shape of the earlobe. Many of my younger patients have hypermobility, and I talk about that in other videos, where you know, if you push your thumb down, well, some patients can push their thumb all the way to their wrist, and that's really one sign of hypermobility. And that can be a factor that gives you more loose skin, which is something that we want to remove with face of surgery. However, at the same time, we want to make those scars as discreet and difficult to see as possible. Middle Eastern patients, well, in a way, this is a variation of ethnic skin, so Middle Eastern patients, we need to be meticulous with our scars to make sure they're as discreet as possible. And generally speaking, these scars are not invisible. You can see the scars, it's just a question of making them as good as we possibly can. My preference is definitely to use regenerative medicine in these scars to ensure we do everything we can in supporting healing with your natural growth factors, such as platelet-rich plasma and then sometimes these scars need to be revised. I would say in about 20% of patients, the scars, when they heal, they can be a little bit more pink. They can be a bit, little bit more lumpy bumpy than average. And when they heal, they're discreet, but they're not invisible. And that's an important consideration with face and neck lift surgery. In some patients, those scars can be virtually invisible, but I would say in 20% of patients, that's not the case and this is an important consideration because the only way to avoid this is really to avoid doing surgery we can be as meticulous as we can and make the scars as discreet as we can and and then it's the natural genetics on exactly how that scar remodels now this scar could be improved further laser could be used to polish the edges of the scar and that isn't necessary in the great majority of patients but this is the natural variation in terms of genetics and how scars heal. And I've just shown in this picture just three different types of skin type, three different types of loose laxity. And we can see the scars, well, there's similarities, but all of them are fundamentally different. And that is the nature of healing. But the best scars, well, in terms of my tips, the ideal result is a virtually invisible scar that is discreet and very difficult to see. And definitely it requires meticulous technique, minimal tension, how the skin is closed and the technique you, techniques used such as non-dissolvable stitches that we remove versus the other techniques that we talked about. Genetics, well, we always need to consider what's the worst case scenario such as keloid scarring and what measures we can take to minimize and avoid those things. Regenerative medicine, well, we can use platelet-rich plasma, AMP. These are um, tools that we can use to enhance the healing and recovery of scars. Lasers, well, certainly using radio frequency, if there is more thickening of the scar, can help with the remodeling of the collagen. And then the final tip I would have is always look at your patient's before and after photographs and look at the scars. Not all scars are going to be perfect, but you want to be looking at where those scars are and are they relatively discreet. I talked to you about all the different aspects of healing of the scars and what can happen and how it can be treated. 
when can scars be revised and of course I showed you a number of different of my case studies my patients and different types of healing within that and finally my tips on how to get the best possible scars now I do hope this information has been helpful for you and if you have any questions for me do not hesitate to contact me thank you for watching